Hi, I'm Lester. We've been asked many times how to light a charcoal barbecue, and we decided what we're going to do is do a wee quick short video just to show you how we do it. We're going to light the, our lovely, wee exciting new game changing pico and show you how really easy it is. The first thing I do is make sure that I've always got a range of things around me, and for the pico, which is our portable unit, I have a few different tools. I've got these small miniature two tools here, I've got the essential probe. Uh, I've got a, two cloths I always bring with me, a dirty one and a clean one. And I bring this little magic box. And what this has is a pair of gloves, which is really good to have, a little knife, a wee power lighter, and some of these wee eco lighters. Now, you can use lots of different things. You can use lighter fluid, you can use the, the, the lighter bricks uh, or blocks, but this is what we choose to use. We think it's a really good solution. So what I'm gonna do now is just show you how we do that. So from the Pico point of view, we raise the mechanism up and then we lift the quick release of the grill. Put the gloves on. And again, this is just lovely and simple, but it means you're not getting your hands dirty. Then put some charcoal into the fire box. Then what we do is put two or three of these, whichever, if you feel indulgent, you can put three. If you feel a bit stingy, you can put one, two, one or two in, but I'm usually going at it and I'll just put three in. And then what I do is I light this, and the reason why I use a wee power blower is it just makes it easier to light. And you just allow the flames to catch these wee eco blocks. And then what we do, which is a really important part of lighting, is you set your charcoal over it, larger pieces over it very carefully. And what this does is this does, gives you an essential aspect of lighting charcoal, which is tons of air. Um, so what, what you do is you just take a few minutes to allow that to stack up. And then just start building up. And the reason why you don't build it all up at first is because you want to allow these wee sticks just to catch a good strong light. And then once that's caught, you can then just start stacking it up. It's as simple as that. So the important thing about lighting your barbecue is that you do it right from the start. An awful lot of people talk about the pain and the nuisance and how hard it is to light charcoal. It really isn't. Once you get the right charcoal, and you get the right technique, you should be cooking in 10, 12 minutes. So what we're gonna do is just leave this alone for the next six or seven minutes until it lights. And then what we'll do is we'll put some of the, the stuff on the outside, on the top, leave it for another few minutes, and then we're gonna flatten it out, and then we're gonna finish off, and we're gonna cook a lovely steak and a couple of kebabs. Well, now we're just about three minutes in, and you can see we're ready to go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to indulge, I'm going to take another couple of minutes, I'm going to bring some of the stuff on the outside, just to bring to the top. Interesting to see, it's quite a blowy day today, and you can see how much charcoal loves wind. Can you imagine a gas barbecue at this point? It's a no-no, it just wouldn't work. So we're now going to just bring some of the unlit ones to the top, give another one or two minutes, and we'll be cooking in under 10 minutes. So now, five minutes in, which is quite amazing, People think it takes the quarter of an hour to light charcoal. You can see for yourself, five minutes. That's all we, t all we need. What we're going to do now is to put on the, the grill, which just clips on very quickly and nicely. That's just going to flatten these middle bits out, just a tiny wee bit. Should have done that first, but anyway, there we go. And then what I'm going to do is put on these lovely kebabs that Lex and I are going to enjoy immediately after the video. So I'm going to put one on there, and I'm going to put one on there. I'm going to put them on the outside, and I'm going to allow them to cook more slowly for a wee while. And then what I think I'm going to do is put the steaks on, two nice ribeyes, and I'm going to Drop this down, and that's one of the nice things about the control of the Pico, is that we've got a lovely, completely controllable mechanism. We can drop that right down onto the charcoal, so it's actually literally touch, touching the charcoal. You can just see 
there's a bit of charcoal in the way. So I just move that up, drop that down, and away we go again, down nice and low. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just move these out to the very outside while we're doing a bit of searing on the steak. So we're just cooking more slowly, doing the nice wee bit of cooking on the kebabs. Beautiful sear on the steaks. And uh, the steaks will be ready to come off very shortly. And then what we'll do is we'll rest them for a few minutes and we'll keep an eye on the kebabs. The thing that we always say is, an, is a must, is a probe. Uh, it really does help in making sure that your temperatures are right. And it's so much easier than trying to work it out as you go. Now we've got some beautiful searing done. What I can do is lift a very simple mechanism, just lift the mechanism up and take it off the heat. So you've got perfect heat control, significantly better heat control than gas, especially with that, that sort of weather. So we've got two lovely steaks, now they're ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them off, set them here and just let them rest. Then what I can do is move the other kebabs in, a wee bit more heat control, but I'm just gonna keep this up nice and high so that we don't overcook the kebabs too quickly. What we can actually do is put in the steaks, if we wanted to, into the lower oven, which would then keep them warm and allow them to uh, rest. Well, we're good to go. Some lovely kebabs. I think we're just going to celebrate them as well. As you can see, um, over the period of time that we took to produce the kebabs in a nice cooked manner, there's not an awful lot of steak left.